Hello, uh, continuing my presentation from here. Uh, so resolving the issue based on promoting the success of all students. Um, as of right now, Mrs. Horton is not effectively teaching her students. They are afraid of her outbursts. They cannot share the room with her. Her attitude in the classroom has to change. And until that happens, she needs to at least be with different kids. Um, by offering her help in the classroom or temporarily moving her, increasing formal and informal observations, and asking how the school can help her at this difficult time, we may be able to save a good teacher. Additional professional development should be taking place in the new program so that she will be able to effectively change her lessons to bring in this program. And in the end, if there is a refusal to change, there must be probation and possible removal because she, at this point, she is not effectively teaching her students. For me, this is the most difficult case study I've encountered. Um, I felt a lot of sadness for the teacher and frustration for the principal. Uh, sometimes the harsh reality is that our personal lives do affect our professional lives. Um, and I can sympathize with that from Mrs. Horton. I'm imagining that she's going through a very difficult time. Uh, but at the same time, as the principal goes, how can you allow someone who's has abusive tendencies towards the students to continue teaching them? Uh, it's a very, very hard situation. Um, I don't know for sure what rights the principal has, what rights the teacher has. Is probation even something to consider? Can we suggest counseling? Are these things that are even allowed um, based on the relationship between the, the administration and the faculty, based on the union? All of those things are, are things that were going through my head. Um, also, if I was Julie's parents, I would want her removed from that classroom. But as a principal, I can't see how we could do that because then we're gonna be forced to move other students as well. Um, still, I can't see that particular parent-teacher relationship improving. That is a toxic situation. Um, especially if you're in a, um, a community that is small, rural setting, parents are going to talk to each other. All of the parents are going to know we're probably still going to have this problem, even if we move the teacher to a completely different room. In the end, it's also hard because doing what is best for the students can hurt the teacher. Um, we're now talking about a single mother with teenage boys who's going through a tumultuous personal life um, and then removing her from a career that before this time was good. Um, that, that could be very, very hard and very trying. Also, there are a lot of problems that are still existing. The parents are going to be frustrated with the situation no matter what. Um, it's also quite possible that the parents know this teacher if they're in a small setting, if they live in the same community. Um, there's probably talk going on outside of the building. Um, will the teacher improve? Will the teacher even admit to the problem? I think that this is going to be a very long process. Um, and also if, the principal decides that moving the teacher is the best option. Will the teacher willingly move? Will the teacher file complaints? Um, is the teacher going to be extremely hostile or will the teacher finally take a breath and admit to this problem? In terms of our standards, uh, standard two, the instructional capacity and educational leader promotes the academic success and personal well-being of every student by enhancing instructional capacity. Um, this is really the key to it all. Um, will my solution promote the academic success of all students? I, I think so, yes. Um, by offering help to the teacher, by offering professional development, by increasing observations and by consistently tracking the problem, um, walking through the classroom, being in constant contact with parents. I do believe that the principal is doing everything in their power to promote the academic success of the students. Um, again, in the end, if you possibly have to remove 
the teacher from the situation, if there is no improvement, that also would promote the academic success. In terms of the personal well-being of every student, I, I think so, yes. Um, by temporarily or permanently switching Mrs. Horton's classroom, you're at least improving the well-being of Julie and the other first graders at this point. That, that relationship has been damaged, possibly beyond repair for this short term. Um, more consistent observations more professional development by following up with uh, Mrs. Horton consistently, by following up with parents, um, by talking to the kids. Um, I do believe that as principal, Mrs. Wilson would be um, promoting the personal well-being. Last but certainly not least, did I enhance instructional capacity? Yeah, I think so. Um, if I am either moving the teacher or they're taking a teacher's aid on, I am allowing this teacher to continue in her position um, with correct professional development in the new reading program and possibly a teacher's aid um, or in a different classroom altogether. In the end, if this teacher is refusing to make changes, she would have to go on probation and there has to be possible dismissal. Um, at this point, she is not a good teacher um, and she is not enhancing the instructional capacity of the students. Um, and as principal, that is our responsibility to ensure that these kids are getting a good education. Uh, I'm sure that brings in a whole lot of other problems, and I'm sure that there are things in here that I did not address uh, as clearly as I would like. But um, again, it's a, a very difficult study for me to comment on. I hope I did a good enough job. Uh, thank you so much for the class. It was really great time.